And our first question will be from Michael Coe. Go ahead. Hey, Coach. Uh, in the locker room, just in the team building, have, has there been like a palpable sense of relief that it's, you know, finally game week, camp is over, and you're going to get to hit someone that's not your teammate? Michael, it really is. A across the country, we've got zero weeks, so we're a week earlier. So everybody else is getting ready for that Saturday before their game, and, and here we are. Uh, but you get uh, – starting January 6th, and then you go through spring practice and you hit the same guys. And, and then all summer they work with player led practices and they compete against the same guys and it's the same looks. And this week you start working on the looks that uh, Florida a and will give us uh, in all three phases and it's new and it's fresh and it's fun for them. Uh, so they can't wait to play somebody else. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew Jones, go ahead. Hey, Coach, have you seen what you wanted to see the last couple of days out of Drake now that he's been named the starter for this week and kind of the way a quarterback has to carry himself when he's that guy? Uh, yes, uh, we we have, Andrew. We um, I thought yesterday was good. I thought he was great today. And and give uh, Jacoby credit. He's been great both days. He, he's gone back to work. He's competed. He understands that uh, he's a snap away from – from being the guy and being out there. Uh, and he's uh, he's responded to that really well. You never know how, how people are gonna respond to adversity. And we've told all the guys, if you're not in the position that you want to be after spring and, and summer and, and preseason camp, you can either pout and regress, which means we were right for not playing you, or you can compete and try to keep getting better. And the reason that uh, we decided to uh, make this decision this time of the year, uh, and it worked with Sam, is that we felt like that whoever the starter was, he needed to have a week to, to prepare being the starter. He needed to talk to you folks. He, he needed to walk in that huddle with, with the, the blue team, and he needed to lead them and, and take over and, and not have that happen Friday night, uh, and then you, you walk out there Saturday morning for the first time. And the other part that was important for us, Andrew, is that the players got to feel him being the guy. Uh, because that that's it's all a little bit different for everybody. So uh, I thought the um, the decision was handled properly. Uh, I thought the timing was right, and I'm I'm uh, really pleased with the results uh, to this point. Uh, the, my other question is about the edge that you wanted to maintain throughout camp. Now that a lot of these decisions have been made, at least for this week, have you seen that edge carry over into this week? Yes, the uh, we we told the guys you still got to earn it every day, and and we we said if if uh, one guy played the best today, we'll watch it this afternoon. We'll move him ahead. We've still got some question marks of how we're going to play the right side of the offensive line. We've still got some question marks about who's going to be out there at receiver and when, how long, and and the same thing with running back. And and uh, we're we're basing it on production every day and. We told the guys after practice, I told the guys after practice, uh, your coaches have to decide who's going to travel. Your coaches have to decide who's going to dress. Your coaches have to decide who walks out there first. Then they have to make decisions during the game of how much do you play, how long do you play, and it's, it's going to be based on how you produce. And if you're making mistakes and you get taken out and somebody else is in, that's, that's on you, man. You got to play. And, and uh, we feel like that that will continue to, to create that edge. Uh, we're going to, today, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, Noah Burnett has earned the, the field goal job. Um, he, he beat out uh, Jonathan Kim. Uh, we waited till today, but he's been more consistent uh, through spring and fall. Uh, Jonathan's still the best kickoff guy in the country. So Jonathan will do the kicking. Uh, ben Kiernan will do the punting. And uh, Noah Burnett will will kick the first extra point or field goal on Saturday. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. That's what creates an edge. It, it's every day, and and we're we're looking at that very carefully. Okay, let's go over to Luciano. Go ahead. Hey, Coach. I hope we're doing well, and thanks for your time. You mentioned Thank back you. in February that you want to have twenty two starters on defense and be simple, but look complicated. Do you feel like you have achieved both of those goals throughout the offseason? Luciano, we've got a lot more blue team guys than, than we had. I, it, it's interesting. It's a great question, and I'll, I'll look at it 
this afternoon to see actually how many blue team guys there are on the offense and the defense. We wanted 22. We don't have 22 on each side of the ball. And when you think that's what we talk about mental health and, and morale and, and um, depression all the time, when you've got 120 and 85 of them on scholarship and, and, and you're going to play 40 to 45 of them um, with special teams and, and getting to play. And we've asked everybody to find their role. Somebody uh, may need to step up and, and be on the show team to, to show the picture of Florida a and That may be their role right now. And they've got to handle that. So, uh, but uh, I'm not really sure how many we have, but we do not have 22 on each side of the ball. I know we've got three or four safeties, um, but even offensive line, we don't have a full, uh, we don't have 10. I think we've got eight. Um, so as you look at it, it, it we're, we're trying to get to that point where we've got 22 and we can absolutely say white team, blue team, and, and just get somebody to, to be ready to go on the field. We, we are too deep at every uh, special team position. So we could say white kickoff coverage uh, up and, and they know 11 of those guys are different than the blue. So we're not having crossover there uh, so that that's all part of the organization of an opening game. Thanks, Coach. Okay, let's go to Rich, Richard Atkins. Go ahead. Hey, Coach. Thank you so much for taking time out today to speak with us. So I just Thank had you. a quick question for you. Uh, last year, we went in preseason, we was ranked top 10. And you said, you know, maybe it was a little bit too high. This season, we're not ranked at all. Uh, do you feel like we're kind of underrated heading into the season opener against uh, Florida a and Richard, we have so many questions on our team that, that I think it's fair that we're not ready because there's a lot of talent, but it's untested. It's un inexperienced. So we'll see, you'll see when we see how they respond on, on Saturday night. And really and truly, you, you look at uh, Florida A&M, uh, they've got 25 new transfers. So we're not going to know who they're playing in some cases either. So they're going to be feeling out our defense because we've got new defensive coaches early in the game. We're going, going to be feeling out their entire team because I've got a list here of all the guys that Coach Simmons talked about at his press conference yesterday. Uh, we're, we're trying to find video on all these guys and try to figure out who they are and, and try to figure out we're not even sure who's starting at quarterback because Musa transferred from Vanderbilt. Um, so this will be a, a, the the – uh, ultimate of that opening game where there are so many question marks, you're, you're not really sure uh, what's going on. I, I looked at, I asked Jeremy before I walked over, we're 26 and 10 as, as uh, me being a head coach in opening games overall, we're 10 and three at Carolina. We're two and one since we've been back. So we beat, uh, we're, we're 26 and 26 and seven, excuse me, uh, overall. Uh, but you, you look at it, we beat South Carolina in the opener. I, I, we were big underdogs. I was shocked that we won the game. We had a quarterback that never played a college game, and we had two linebackers that had never played in a, a college football game at linebacker. And then you come back the second year, and, and we started really slowly against Syracuse, but we came out and won the game easily uh, and, and ran away with it in the fourth quarter. And then last year, we, we did everything wrong, and Virginia Tech outplayed us, and they were more physical, and we gave up six sacks. We had three turnovers. Um, we were two for 10 on third downs and, and we lost the game, but we still had a chance to drive with the last series of the, the game and, and score to tie it up and go into overtime. Uh, and, and we've gone back in each of those games, um, Richard, to see why we won and why we lost. And it's very evident. So those are things that, that we've really, really worked on to, to be better on Saturday in this game. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Okay, over to Ross Martin. Hey, Coach Brown, I got two for you here. Uh, DJ Jones, obviously you named him uh, like the number one or starter for Florida a and What have you seen out of him that kind of allowed him to earn that starting spot? I know he struggled with injuries, so it's kind of an interesting story. Yes, uh, Ross, he's, um, he has stayed healthy, and we've hit him a lot, uh, number one. Uh, and weirdly enough, he's kind of the old guy in the room. Now with, with British out, we would have started British. He would have walked out there first if he'd been healthy. Uh, but DJ can, can do it all. He can run it. He can catch it. He can pass protect. He knows all the schemes. Um, so he's a, a guy that's uh, been in the game before. 
and, and we just feel like it'll be comforting for our team to let him go out there and him because he has such confidence. And then you mentioned the right side of the offensive line. I know you've got a couple guys there working, um, William Barnes and Zach Rice and Spencer Rowland. And on Spencer Rowland, I know you mentioned that he has class, some NBA conflicts. How has that kind of worked out with him, you know, getting the nod? But are there still conflicts with his NBA schedule? No, Spencer has, has gotten all that worked out. And, and uh, so he's been at practice every day since I, I talked about that earlier. Uh, so it will be John Adorno and William Barnes or Spencer, uh, two of those three positions. And, and really and truly, that'll be based on how they practice today. So we will, we will go grade this video now and, and we'll make that decision. And, and we're through with pads. We'll have a, a shorts practice tomorrow. And, and then we will uh, have a walkthrough on Friday. So we're through. It'll be meetings and focus and, and uh, shorts, but we're not hitting anymore. So uh, guys have, have uh, earned where they're going to be on Saturday as of today. The hay's in the barn, as they say, right? The hay is in the barn. Absolutely. Okay, uh, let's go over to Dina King. Hey, Coach, with you guys starting earlier than most people, uh, do you guys expect a huge recruiting turnout, commits, recruits, uh, Saturday in Keenan? Dina, we do. We, we, uh, we're we're – wanting the 23s that uh, are committed to us uh, to come if they can, because most of them will play Friday night and, and would be off on Saturday. We're, we're asking a few of the non-committed 23s that we're still recruiting to come. And then we're asking the top 24s uh, across the country. So we, we feel like this is a, a great opportunity for a recruiting weekend, simply because nobody else is playing um, in our area. And, and it gives us a chance to have all the foot, footprint kids there that we're recruiting. Thank you. Thank you. And plus it being a, a national game on ACC Network, uh, ACC Network studio show is gonna be here. They're gonna be here Friday, then they're gonna have the studio show during the game. So it should be a tremendous amount of recruiting publicity uh, for Carolina football for the weekend. Okay, let's go over to Mike Salarte. Hi, Coach. Good to see you again. I'll wave at you so you can see me. Uh, yes, getting back to the uh, the notion of the uh, the opener and the, the extra study that you're going to have to do and, and the great unknown of week zero or the first game, you, you kind of outlaid what you're going to be doing, but how much of a, how much pleasure or how much fun is that challenge for you as a head coach and for your staff to try to figure out and, and win that uh, that unspoken chess match uh, of personnel and, and schemes and so on. Mike, it's so much fun and it's, and it's very challenging and we've got it two weeks in a row because next week we have another opener uh, and, and that's so unusual. Um, so, so we'll be doing this for, for two weeks, even though uh, we'll know a little bit more about app state because they've got more people back and fewer transfers. Uh, but you start looking at uh, the, the players, the schemes, they had some coaches change on, on their, their staff uh, at uh, FAMU late. Um, so it, it's fun. It's a, it's a fun challenge. Uh, this is a, a great opener for us because uh, their defense was top 10 in the FCS last year. Uh, they've got a lot of speed on offense. They, uh, uh, Coach Simmons grew up under the Rich Rodriguez um wing and in, in, in football so he he runs that offense so it's an up-tempo offense like we are and it should be really fun for the fans to watch so uh, it's a great challenge for us in the opener and um and and then again you've got one next week that uh, uh family's won nine games the last two years that they've played they were in the fcs playoff last year uh, app state won 10 games last year uh, Georgia State won more games than they've ever had. So we've got a unique three weeks, two of them on the road where we haven't played very well, where we're playing teams that are, are playing at the highest level uh, in their program. So it's it's great for us because we, we've got to figure out who we are really fast. And as you go back and you were talking about looking at transfer players and that sort for for the Rattlers, are you also having to go back and look at the new coaches like you talked about and maybe study some of their schemes and tendencies to, to maybe help figure out what they may or may not do. 
we are we are all over the place we're trying to figure out how we who we are and we're trying to figure out who who they are mike so uh it's some sleepless nights uh uh coach went over some guys and and when you look at it uh aj davis uh um, running back from Pitt that just transferred in july we actually played against him or he played here at one point i don't think we've played against him uh but he's uh, really a good football player we said the transfer quarterback from Vanderbilt is competing for starting jobs. Um, you start looking at uh, Xavier Smith. Coach said that he's a, a top NFL prospect at receiver. Uh, I think they've got three transfers from Florida State uh, that beat us here last year. So they, they were talking about, will they feel comfortable in this stadium? Well, uh, they will. Pittsburgh guy will. They've all been here. Um, and, and those guys beat us last year. So um, and then he, he mentioned the punter is, is one of the best in the country and the, the NFL uh, scouts looking at him. There's a transfer from Wake Forest named James Ash that we're hearing wonderful things about as a defensive lineman. Uh, he's uh, big and fast. And then um, Isaiah Land is a, a guy that's a pass rusher at 6'4", 225, and he led the nation in sacks last year for FCS. So he's really, really quick. And, and Coach was talking about him being a top pro prospect. And, and then um, uh, B.J. Bowler, um, NFL prospect, is uh, All-American number 11 at corner for them. So uh, then you start talking about the transfers who we're trying to figure out who more of those guys are. But they've got a lot of pro prospects. And as Coach said, this isn't a money game. This is a get-money game uh, because uh, the their guys want to show what they can do against our guys uh, to be very impressive to the uh, to the NFL scouts. And this is an opportunity for them to do that. So it's a, it's, it's a great challenge for us. Their history is unbelievable. I, I mentioned Jake Gaffer and Rudy Hubbard the other day being two of the great coaches that I knew and, and, and watched. Uh, Joe Taylor was also that. He was on the AFCA board with, with me, and, and Joe's a dear friend, and he did a tremendous job there. So everybody that's ever been there is one, and they've got great pride in their program, and, and, and they will come with a, a good group of fans, and and our fans, it's just about sold out. So buy what few tickets are left, please. And, and let's make it a sellout and, and, uh, and be a lot of fun for, for TV. Their band, the Marching 100, is coming. And they're going to be all over campus, it sounds like, before the game. So it's going to be so much fun. And, and um, so it's a, it's a celebration. It's a celebration to open the season. Uh, a great game for TV for a zero week. And and, and a great time to celebrate HCU, HBCUs in not only our state, but nationally. And then having Rod Broadway and, and Coach Bill Hayes coming in uh, as our honorary captains with Coach Hubbard being theirs. It's just, uh, it'll be a special night. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. Adam Smith, go ahead. Mac, I was going to ask you about FAMU, but you went pretty deep on there. But, like, I mean – did you really count 25 transfers on that roster? Is that you're not rounding up, are you? I mean, what FCS only gets 63 scholarships, do they not? That seems unbelievable. What I'm doing, Adam, is repeating what they reported. <laughs> so that's the 25. And and I look here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine are are listed to to be either starters or part-time starters or alternating. So um, th there's a lot of them that are going to play. I got you. I'm sure that has to make your eyes spin when you see the number. But uh, speaking of other numbers, I, I believe you have a birthday coming up. Um, don't know if there was uh, any birthday wisdom that you have to impart to the rest of us here. or what? How have you, you know, what comes to mind as, as another birthday comes around here? How are you feeling? I guess at 70, I'll be happy you're still having them. I had a, a great friend, Mr. Lewis Pierce at, Tex, or at Texas, and he was 94. And I said, Mr. Pierce, what's your goal for next year? And he said to be 95. So <laughs> I, I think as, as you get a little bit older, that that's you, you appreciate life more and you, you enjoy what you're doing more and you, you, you take your purpose uh, more seriously, I think, because you, you understand uh, what you've been through and you really want to help and give back. And that's something that, that being older does. Um, and I've never been able to celebrate a birthday because it's always been during the start of season or football season. So, uh, we won't be able to celebrate this one either. Sally said, can we go to dinner or something? I said, no, we, we can go to training table. 
uh, but we can't go to dinner. We don't have time. So, uh, but it's, uh, um, I am uh, healthy and in a great place in my life and excited to have another one. Thank you, Mac. Thanks, Adam. Okay, let's go over to uh, Brian Murphy. Thanks, thanks, Mac. You, you mentioned uh, Malachi Hamrick uh, on Monday, and I and I just wondered, as a freshman, it, is pass rush a skill that can translate really easily from from high school to college, uh, where maybe he has to work on some other things, but but you can get him in there to rush the passer. Brian, absolutely, and and that's a a, a knack. And we have more guys that can pass rush right now, uh, just naturally, than we've had since we've been here. And a lot of the freshmen have trouble playing early because it's an 18 year old against a 22 year old and it's the strength factor. Uh, but somebody that that's got the length and the quickness, uh, and the ability and the confidence of Malachi to rush the passer, uh, makes it where you can put him in a game and, and he would be a situational player. Obviously it would be when we feel like they're going to throw it or have screens or draws. Uh, but he's, he's really good. And then we're excited about watching him uh, on Saturday. He, we are planning on him being on the field uh, with a package of pass rushers on Saturday. Thanks. Okay, over to Thanks. Michael Coe. And, and Brian, he's given our tackles fits. It, it's been, they, they really appreciate when a guy on our team is really good and prepares them for the games on Saturday. And he's done that. He's so quick and he, he, he loves to play. He's passionate about it. So our tackles, they, they get a smile on their face when he comes up and, and gets ready to pass rush. All right, go ahead, Michael. Hey, Coach. I know it's still pretty early on, but how is uh, Antoine Green's injury recovery going? Is he on track to be back for the Notre Dame game, as you had hoped? Uh, yes, he's, uh, he's out at practice every day. Uh, Michael, I, I don't ask the doctors every day, but I, I saw he's working out. Uh, he still has his shoulder in a sling, uh, but he's, uh, you know, whether it's that week or the next one, I, I think it just depends on how he heals and how quickly he can be confident enough with his uh, body to get, get back. But uh, I know he, he's wanting to come back and, and he and British have tremendous attitudes and uh, they're, they're just such a great example of how to take negatives and turn them into positives for the rest of the guys on this team and really and truly staff. Because here's British. I mean, he's he's out here killing himself in a cart, driving around coaching in special teams and running backs. And he could be depressed in a corner somewhere with, with what happened to him. So uh, I'm really, really proud of those two guys and the way they've handled their adversity. Thank you. Thank you. All right, coach. That was the last question we had for today. So I think we're all uh, we've come to a come to an end today. Good, Mark. Let me see if there was anything else that I yes, I think we uh, the three captains we released: Corey Gaynor, uh, Cedric Gray, and uh, Obi Agbuna. And those guys, uh, we had five last year. We've had five for the three years we've been here. We decided as a staff uh, we wanted to prioritize it more. Uh, and make it harder to be a captain. So the, uh, the coaches pick these, uh, and all of them have overcome um, some minor injury, and they practiced every day, and they fought every day, and competed every day. And Obi is on, uh, he's starting on, on all four special teams. And that's why they chose him. Uh, and that would have been British, probably because British would have been on all the special teams as well. Uh, but that, that, uh, uh, that news, the, the news about Noah Burnett, I wanted to make sure you had um, uh, the defense from uh, Florida a &M was ranked in the top 10 in the country in FCS last year. They've actually named themselves the Dark Cloud defense. Uh, Coach Simmons said in his press conference that he's looking forward to getting back to Keenan Stadium where he threw four touchdown passes and he has great memories and he's planning on his guys uh, doing the same. Um, and, and then at the last of his, his press conference, he said they're planning on coming in and shocking the world. So they're confident. Uh, they've got uh, uh, an experienced team. Uh, they, they've got the transfers that we're trying to figure out. Uh, but again, just think about how hard it is for coaches this time of the year. You've got to figure out out of your 120 who's going to play, who's going to travel, who's going to dress, who's going to play, how much are they going to play, when are they going to play, uh, how do you substitute, 
Um, so there's a, there's a lot on, on coaches plate, coaches plates, the first game of the season, much more than after you get into the season and get a, a rhythm and a routine and, and you've got, uh, uh, pretty much things in place. Some things change during the season, but normally if people have earned the right by now, uh, they will get to keep that. So, uh, appreciate you folks. And I will see you on Saturday. Thanks coach. Thank you.